Dustin Torres, Teddy Atlas, now joined by the two-time heavyweight champion of the world, former light heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Moore. Always nice right. to visit with you, Michael. We've Thanks seen a lot so. of you on our air tonight. Yesterday was the 14-year anniversary of you winning the heavyweight title against Evander Holyfield. When you reflect on that and being next to your old trainer here, what kind of memories come to mind? Well, that's good memories and bad memories. Teddy was on my behind every day, <laughs> all day, you know. Keep it real. You know, he was, but he brought the best out of me. What, what's it, let's get a sense of what it's like now when the two of you are together and you're able to talk about those times. Oh, we talk about it. We're friends. So we're able to hang out. That was a part, that was business. You know, when it's business, now we're able to hang out and become friends. Michael Moore, 14 years ago yesterday, earning the heavyweight championship of the world with his victory over Evander Holyfield. 52 wins in your career. Carlos Vilches, 53 wins in this Argentinian's career. Round number three against Juan Urango. Urango scored a knockdown in that first round. Michael, what's your status right now? Are you fighting? No, no, I'm not fighting. Not be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just fought in February. You had a first round knockout win, and you have won six in a row dating back to 2004. But yeah, we've I heard have... this from you before that you're not fighting. No, I had surgery on my left hand, and my doctor, Dr. Malone, told me it was over. I couldn't fight anymore. Dr. Malone, Charles Malone, probably the best hand surgeon in the world in New York City. Does surgery on a lot of fighters' hands. Michael Moore with us here. See, Teddy, as we were talking yesterday, you said Valtez has the move around. Durango doesn't come in behind his jab. He comes in when he wants to get close, and as he gets close, he unleashes a lot of heavy leather. Yeah, work out of guys. Get out He's there. not able to come in behind his jab. And because there's no jab coming, it gives an opportunity for Valtez to pot shot him a little bit, which right now he's not doing because he's feeling the aftermath of the punches he took the last round. And right now, I think he's being a little bit too careful, worrying about making sure he moves his legs and stays protected and not thinking about offense. But there are opportunities for Bill Jays, as you just said, to catch you angle coming in with no jab. Just pot shot him a little bit like that and then move out to the side. And just how your angle is coming in, he's coming in with his head down, as we spoke about yesterday or earlier today. As he's coming in, all he has to do is be able to land Vilches as to be able to land that uppercut because his head is down and he's coming in, straight in. There no will, angle. There will be opportunities for right hands, whether it's an uppercut or a straight right hand for Vilches. Well, Vilches is doing a great job. I keep moving because he's making the wrangle move. The wrangle has been a flat-footed fighter most of his, most of his career. The only thing that Vilches, and you're right, the only thing he said is Vilches has to be careful that he doesn't move straight back. Because then he's really not doing what he wants to do, which is keep Urango off balance. The whole idea of moving for Vilches is to take advantage of Urango not being able to punch when you're not in front of him. But if you move straight back like that, well, you're in front of him. And then Urango doesn't have to move his feet. He can come straight forward. Why do I have a feeling that this is what it sounded like when the two of you were watching tape sitting on a couch back in 1994? Great stuff to listen to Michael Moore and Teddy Atlas. Let him go. Let Analyze him go. round number three here between Urango and Carlos Vilches. End of three. Glad to be visiting with the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world. So we had ringside remembers tonight. 14 years ago yesterday was when you defeated Evander Holyfield. What were you thinking when you came back to your corner and Teddy was sitting on your stool? Wow. Well, I can say it now. I was like, man, what is wrong with you? I looked at him like, is this guy crazy? I said, Teddy, I got to fight. You know, but I, but I guess that, that's what you need to do to bring the best out of me. I was thinking the same thing. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you guys have uh, talked about the jab being a story here with Juan Urango, the lack of a jab. When you fought Holyfield, you landed 180 out of 309 thrown as we take a look at... 14 years ago yesterday, the total jab, 180 of 309. It, it always amazes me week after week, Michael, how many fighters just don't get it. How single-handedly having that one weapon 
will get you through time and time again, get you out of trouble and make trouble for the other guy. Well, most fighters, they want to load up on the punches and try to get knockouts because that's what the crowd wants to see is knockouts. They don't know that if you establish a jab, you're able to put punches behind the jab. You know, Gojic has been involved in head clashes before where he's been caught and where actually he's been involved in a couple of technical decisions because of head clashes. Just a moment ago, both these fighters came very close to banging heads. Would not be surprised with their style. Oh, you see him wiping right there. Would not be surprised if we saw some banging of the nuggets on the inside and maybe a cut. And again, to elaborate and take it a little further, what you touched on, Mike, is movement so important depending on the style you're dealing with. In this case, Bill Chase with a stronger fighter in front of him. Needs to use that ring. Try to keep your rango off balance, but where are you moving? That's the discipline. That you're moving off to the sides and not straight back. Because then you defeat the whole purpose. Because it looks like a perception, hey, he's moving. He shouldn't be getting caught. But if he's moving straight back, your angle is not being kept off balance. And by the people watching this fight, they can see the experience. The experience is that Velchez is moving, he's on his toes, he's moving, trying to get out of the way. They look at your ring, and your ring is flat-footed, but he's following him around the ring, he's not cutting the ring off. He wants to get in there and exchange punches like he is now. Uh, off. Oh, big, big, big right hook. Four, five. That's it. Wave and count. You know, earlier this year, we had what we thought was the knockout of the year in this very ring on our air. It may have just been topped by Juan Urango. Carlos Vilches just flat out on his back. He's out. Medical attention immediately into the ring for Carlos Vilches. That's a good sign, though. He's conscious, and he's communicating, and he has motion of his neck, and he's attempting to get up. They are not going to let him up until they feel confident that he can handle it. They're going to look him over. He has movement in his extremities. The right hook leveled him, and then he hit the canvas very hard. That is the power that has had so many excited about the career. Juan Urango, former 140-pound champion, who just lights it up here tonight on Wednesday Night Fights. Well, Gojes has been knocked out four times, make it five. And you know, he has not done well, Bill Jays, visiting in the United States when he's come here to fight. Most of his fights, as you touched on earlier, Joe, have been in Argentina. He's fought in the U.S. just four times in 63 fights, and he's lost three of those four all by knockout. Make it four or five now, all by knockout losses when Vilchez has come to U.S. soil. Dr. Robert Boltich and Alan Fields immediately into the ring to tend to Carlos Vilchez and Teddy we don't want to play doctor, but you and I have seen this before, and there are some good signs that we're seeing right now yeah, on the Vilches. He's aware. We're not playing doctor. We're being responsible about it, but you see it right there. The picture speaks for itself. Now they'll get him to the school, typically. Yeah, they were doing their job. They're doing it in steps, in phases, where they keep him still. They make sure he's okay. They check what they have to check. They look into his pupils. You know, they do their job, and then slowly... They get him up to a stool, as we see now, and they continue the examination. So the doctor's doing their job here in Florida at the Hard Rock and making sure that the fighter is okay before they go any further. We are going to show you the highlight now, a highlight that undoubtedly you will see throughout the rest of the next 24 hours and throughout the rest of the year in boxing. Here it comes. Wow. Beautiful. It's a beautiful right hook. Urango got him where he wanted him. He wanted to slug with him. As he slugged with him, he knew he was going to catch him. And, you know, he got himself into a position. We talked about movement. And, of course, movement in the center of the ring, on the outside of the ring. He got trapped on the ropes. 
and the left hand, a hand that you don't pay a lot of attention to. And watch it right here. The left hand doesn't land, but it serves as a setup. The left hand sets it up. It distracts him just enough where the right hand lands. Listen to this in real time. Here's another slow-mo of the right hook. But we are going to let you listen to this right hook and just experience it in real time as that is a real good sign there to see Carlos Vilches up on his feet. But let's take you back one more time to the fourth round knockout. One single right hook by Juan Urango. Here it is. Listen. And you could hear the thud of the back of his skull hitting the canvas. And that does double the damage, Teddy. The right hook does damage. Well, that's why it's so important to make sure that there's the right cushion in the rings. And it's mandated that these rings are approved with the right cushioning. So that cushion.